and welcome back to my channel. This week we're going to be going over how to throw a teapot on the wheel. So if you are new to pottery, I would highly suggest you go back and watch a couple of previous videos of mine. The beginning how to throw on the wheel. A trimming video would be helpful and same thing with pulling a handle and ceramic cookie jar tutorial part one and two. That's going to give you two different types of lids whereas this video is only going to go over one type of lid. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start going over our materials that we're going to need. So you're going to need a pottery wheel. I would suggest at least two bats, maybe three if you'd like three, but I always just go with two. Some wire tools, a needle tool, a pair of calipers, and if you don't have one of these, a ruler works just fine. A wooden tool a sponge, and a bucket of water. You can go ahead and get other tools if you'd like or swap ones out, but these are just the basics of what I like to use when I do my teapots. So let's go ahead and get started. Give it a good wiggle, make sure it's on. Take our lump of clay. And we'll get started. This can look like many different things. But remember, with doing larger pieces of clay, you want to make sure that you take your time to compress the bottom here. And that's just really pushing down. You're not trying to make this hole any deeper. You're just kind of taking your fingers or your sponge and just pushing down. Squish those clay particles together so no water's in there and it'll prevent cracking later. that's a little off. What I always suggest doing is kind of thinning this out just a little bit. So when we take our needle to, we're really not chopping off as much as we would be if this was still super thick. So you always want to level the tops on these. We'll get all the little nurdles off of the side here. Yes, they are called nurdles. 
and then we can go ahead and flatten. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just kind of pinching, or not really pinching, but just kind of holding and pushing down with my top hand here, because I am going to flatten this out because I want my lid to end up sitting flush to the pot itself. So once that's a little bit more flat, I'll kind of angle this back to where I wanted it. Because I don't want that wide of an opening, but wide enough that we can get our hands in there and make it easy for somebody to clean. Level. And I think I could use a little more trim off the bottom. Go ahead and do that too. Should make it easier on ourselves later with cleanup. Alright, now I'm gonna go ahead and stop. Do make sure you get all of your water out of here, like always, before we cut, and then we're just gonna wire this off. So we do want to figure out how wide this interior is. You are gonna want a ruler or some sort of calipers for this as well. This is just to measure the lid. And if you wanna try and do this with like a finger or like a notch on your one of your tools, that's fine too. I'm gonna go ahead and use the calipers though. And what I wanna do is measure the interior of the opening here. So I wanna get right on top of that. Make sure that that is right about where that's open across the middle. So, I'll go ahead and tighten these up so they don't move. I'll set my calipers and my pot off to the side. So now we're gonna go ahead and get our small ball of clay, our second bat, and we're gonna throw our lid. So, we'll go ahead and get started there too. Same way that we do everything else, centering, coning, and then making our shape. throwing our lid upside down. So we're gonna start by making our hole. We want this to kind of be as wide as the interior of that pot is. So, got this open. I'm gonna find my calipers. I'm gonna kind of measure. So that is actually right about where we want it. So, we'll do our compressions like always. Make sure our lids don't crack. We're gonna do is we're gonna split this right in half. So I'm gonna kind of shove my finger into half of it and only grab part of it. And I don't know if you can kind of see where this is going, but this will be the part that sits into it. And this is the part that we want to match up with our calipers. And actually, this would be helpful for those of you who are beginners to watch my how to throw double walled things video that definitely goes over the step of splitting the clay in half so we can kind of separate these two parts of the lid. So stop my wheel. That seems right about perfect. So I'm gonna take my needle tool because this is seeming a bit long for a, a jar top. kind of want to make sure that this is sitting at about a 90 degree angle here so I'm gonna also go in like this flatten that out so it's about as close to a 90 degree angle here as we possibly can get it and after adjusting I always check again like if you see this there's far more room here now than there was before so you always want to check up until the point where you're ready to take it off of your bat. That 
seems about good. So we'll take our wire tool. We'll cut this off too. Now this type of lid is best if you want to sculpt something on top of the lid for your knob. Whereas if you did the other type of lid from my cookie jars part one, it's the lid is kind of thrown into the piece altogether. So if you don't want to hand sculpt your knob, I would suggest watching the other cookie jar video. So I'll move this off to the side. The very last thing we are going to throw is going to be our spout. And I usually just do this straight on the wheel head, mainly because spouts are small and very easy to move. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this. And this is the only thing that I feel like doesn't have a video prior to it that we're gonna be going over newly in this video. I also don't use a bat for the spout, mainly because I like to condense my spout when it's done onto my lid bat to really just save space. Cause I feel like us artists are always looking for more space and never seem to have enough. we're gonna go ahead and poke our hole. The difference with this is we're just gonna go straight down to the bottom. So I'm gonna use my sponge just because I have nails this time. I'm gonna straight down to the bottom here. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and just like normal. However, we are going to really try to make sure we keep our opening as narrow as we possibly can for this. Because spouts definitely need to be smaller and the wider this goes, the harder it's going to be to bring it back. So. And with this too, we also don't really need to worry about all the water building up on the inside because there is no bottom. So you don't need to worry about that type of cracking. about good for the most part. So I'm gonna start to kind of cloth color this in a little smaller. Once we get to about here, I always cut this part off mainly because it always seems to get a little wobbly for me. That might not be the case for you, but for me, I always need to cut it off. So at this point, I like to use the back of my needle tool to sort of get inside here and mess around any further. And I also like to kind of angle this, like bevel it outward, make the pour a little smoother. You want to be careful with this part just because it's really not attached to much considering your middle is not stuck to anything. All right. So let's call that our spout. Now, what I like to do is we'll get a bit of water on our bat or onto our wheel head. We'll take our wire and we're just gonna come from where I put the water and cut underneath here. And because the water gets underneath, you're gonna see this kind of hydroplane right off of the wheel. One more thing that I like to do before taking it off is I usually like to give it like a little divot here for the top part of my spot. So I'll take my needle and I'll just kind of pinch around it. And I'll pick this up so you guys can kind of see. Thank you. 
So that way there is this top part here. This helps with water flow later because it's like when you pick up a water bottle and you go to dump it underneath, it goes glug, 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 and it just drops. There's no smooth pour unless you're at an angle. It needs a little bit of air to kind of regulate that flow. So that little bit here is kind of our water, like our airflow little divot here, and it'll always help with pouring. So we'll move this over. All right, guys, so I have my base, I have my spout, and my lid, and those are just ready to dry out a little bit. So I'm gonna set these aside and come back when they are leather hard. That'll probably be like a day, but if you are in a hotter area or a drier area, it might be a couple of hours. But you do want these leather hard before we go any further, so I'm just gonna set mine aside and I'll be right back. All right, everyone, so it has been a couple of days. All of my stuff is leather hard now, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, get into kind of the assembly part of everything. So you're gonna have your lid piece, your teapot, of course, your spout, and then you're gonna want kind of a sliver of clay like this for your handle. I'm gonna start with the handle just because it's gonna need a little bit of time because when we pull our handles, we get them super wet, so we wanna leave that time for it to dry. So let's go ahead and pull that before we do anything. And because it's a teapot, you're probably going to want to make this handle longer than most like mug handles you've ever made. Um, just give yourself more room and if you need to cut it off later, you totally can. And I think that's pretty much long enough. So I'm gonna find somewhere to set this up. I'm probably just gonna do it right here on the table because, um, well, when you're a potter, everything is a tool. Good, cool. All right, so I'm gonna put my lid and my spout aside and then we're gonna start trimming our pot. I am using a foam bat here. However, if you don't have one, that's fine. You can always go ahead and use the little wads of clay to hold it on like have our trimmed pot. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and check my lid. Make sure this fits. So its lid is a little bit um, wetter than everything else, just cause I covered this one up while everything else was drying. Cause it's smaller. So that fits pretty well. However, I don't really like this overhang. So what I'm gonna do, and why I really like the foam bed is because I'm gonna trim it right on it. And I really wanna get this perfectly centered. So 
So that way this one fits perfectly. There we go. That's about good. So let's just go ahead and actually, so I got a smaller ribbon tool here for this one, just because we'll be going into finer detail. And also this tool is sharper than the last one. You really want to be gentle on the lid. You can take as much off of your teapot as you see fit. I just kind of want mine to be flush to the side of the vessel. I'm gonna get a little bit under there so it doesn't start just like wrapping around. This is why you don't trim your things too wet. But for the sheer sake of getting this done, here we go. All right. So we got our lid all nice and snug right up to it. Now we can go ahead and attach our spout. So find whatever spot you want this to sit on. Um, you do want to think about where your spout ends, mainly because you want the top of your spout to end up laying even with the very top of your teapot, because if you put something on sideways, this can only hold as much liquid it would be before it hits the spout, which means you'd end up losing like this top half here. So you kind of want to angle this a little up. So we're going to kind of shave this down into the angle that we want. So I'm gonna find the top of this, which is where I made that little indent for our water to kind of escape. And I'm just gonna kind of make almost like dia diagonal lines. That actually line up quite well. So you can kind of see how I'm gonna cut that. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and take my needle I try to not stab through the very first time I go to try and cut on a line. Um, I like to kind of ease my way through it because if you just kind of push like with like force on your needle and if this is still like a little bit malleable, which you'd want it to be malleable and able, enable to enable in order to attach it to your teapot, it would end up warping on you and so don't do that through a couple times until it finally cuts off. Unless you made this really thin, in which case good luck attaching it. All right, clean this up a little bit. All right, so you can kind of see how I've cut that down a little, so. fit quite a bit better um, but it seems like this top part probably needs a little bit off just that way this will sit just a bit sounder that seems pretty good all right so now once I have this I'm gonna take my needle I'm gonna hold this on there and I'm just going to cut right around it. So you guys can see I've made a little line. Now that's not where we're just gonna go cut our hole out of because you still wanna leave some edge so that way it can attach to our spout. So I'm gonna use this as kind of like my score mark. I'm gonna score all on the inside here. And then once I have a 
decent score line. I'm gonna go ahead and cut through this. So remember, lightly cut through, it'll help make it cleaner if you don't have the right tools for this. You can also use an X-Acto knife so you don't have to do this. I like to kind of clean up that inside edge there. I'll take my lid off just so I can see what's going on on the inside. Make sure it's clean enough. All right, and then we're gonna score. Another spout, I'll use a little bit of water. to kind of have my hand on the inside here when I push this down just to make sure that it's got a really solid connection and some nice pressure behind it. And now we can go ahead and smooth this out. Now if you have your wooden tool around this would be a really good time to pull out that back end of this. I like to use this to really smooth my stuff in. Sometimes it's like the extra play and just kind of shove it into this top crack to kind of get it to blend just a little bit more. Alright, so once you have this, you can also take your sponge to really smooth this out. And if you end up digging this up in the process of assembling it, just use your sponge, it'll be fine. I'm also going to try and get this kind of in the middle here, or like in between, where this is on the connection point on the inside. Also get my finger in there. Okay everyone, so our handle has been a little bit more set up now that we have waited a bit. I actually ended up waiting overnight um, just because it is pretty cold and pretty wet here. So it did take a bit longer than I thought, but we don't really want to rush these things. Teapots can be a very fragile process. So we'll go ahead and cut this off of our base and try to get the shape that we're looking for here. Now, just because um, our teapots, you want the handle and the spout to kind of line up, it is important that you do kind of have a direct line here. So what I'm going to do is, now that I have this, I'm just going to look over the top so that way I can make sure that this sits on properly. And that, that looks actually like a pretty good fit, which usually doesn't happen the first time, but that's nice. And then I'm going to make my tiny little notch marks around where my handle would connect just so I can make sure that I'm not scoring a ton of the surface. And again, guys, if you have not watched the handle videos and if this part is feeling a little complicated, go back and watch my how to pull handles video that I had done um, kind of towards the start of this channel. So I'm gonna go ahead and score the edges of our handle. And I'll use some of this goop that's in my splash pan from when I threw this a couple days ago. I'm going to take this off so I can kind of get my hand on the inside here. So we'll stick it on, make sure that is right across from our spout. And I'm going to have my hand on the inside so I can really push on that connection point just like I did with that spout there. smooth that out. All 
right, everyone, so there we have our teapot, and the very last thing that we would want to do is make a knob if you'd like one, um, and you can do this by just rolling up a piece of clay and scoring at the top, or you can do something a little bit more sculptural and elaborate, but um, otherwise, this totally works by itself, and we have our teapot. Thank you all for watching. I hope that this was a helpful video, and if you liked it, go ahead and hit like, subscribe, and I will see you all next week.